yeah, they'll believe it. Oh, hi, welcome back to Exotic Art Play Place, everyone. Thanks for joining in on this beautiful, sunshiny afternoon. Today, we'll talk about 10 reasons why you should not buy a used Mercedes-Benz, according to Lexus owners. That's right, Lexus owners often feel vindicated and justified in buying the Toyota base luxury car. And often they feel vindicated and justified in pointing out the flaws okay. of why you should not buy a used Mercedes-Benz. Well, but we'll talk about those 10 reasons and are there in fact workarounds so that you can enjoy a used Mercedes-Benz. After all, life's too short to drive boring cars, right? Let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Place and today I'm So why shouldn't people take pot shots at Mercedes? After all, Mercedes is known for their elegance, style, performance, cutting edge technology. They've also been around a long, long time on the world stage. They are always on the tip of your tongue when you talk about luxury cars. So let's get into why you should not buy a used Mercedes Benz. So let's start with number 10 and work our way back down to number one at the very end. The first one happens to be initial value drop or depreciation. Now you finally spent all this time shopping for the specific make of car you want. You want that great new luxury car and you found the model that you're looking for. You walk into the dealership, you meet the salesperson, test drive it, you love it, sign on the dotted line and you drive away with that new set of keys in your hand and you're loving every minute of it. But then that's not the end of the story. So a year, two years, three years down the road, you look back and you see other cars exactly like yours on the used car market for 20, 30, 40, and sometimes 50% less than it was when it was new. And you start to ask yourself, wow, did I lose a fortune? But it doesn't just end there because we're talking about used cars. And used cars continue that sharp depreciation curve. As a matter of fact, after four or five years, you think it's all over? No, the depreciation continues. Now, that's all well and good and justified by many Lexus owners. However, what's the difference? You buy a Lexus car and maybe it'll save you an extra 10% by the end of year five. Is that all well and good? But ultimately, does that have to justify driving around in a refrigerator or a washing machine for that last five years just so you can save that extra five to $10,000? I think not. So even though there is a sharp depreciation curve, almost every single luxury car and every car in general does see significant depreciation from year zero to year five. So buy what you like. So the next reason you should not buy a used Mercedes, according to Lexus owners, happens to be the high cost to repair the technology located in these cars. Absolutely, Mercedes is chocked full of expensive technology. For example, they have the digital displays, they have all the safety features that do break and when they do they're expensive. How about air ride suspensions? When they develop leaks, the cars can sag in the rear end and of course those parts can be expensive to fix, whether it's air accumulators, compressors, any air ride components can cost you a lot of money. How about dual clutch gearboxes in certain cars? Those get very expensive to repair as well. And of course any of the cars with twin turbos nowadays have a strong possibility or potential for failure. And to replace a set of turbochargers in any one of these modern day cars, you can expect a bill anywhere from five to $10,000. There's no question Mercedes-Benz has a high likeliness of failure and a very expensive associated bill that goes with it. But let's not forget, Lexus too has some technology that is possibly working against them. Fortunately, many of their cars are very reliable, but there are parts that can fail too when you talk about technology. Lexus is huge on hybrid cars. What do you think happens to a full set of batteries at 10 to 12 years when those batteries start to fail? You can only imagine how much those batteries batteries actually cost. While many experts in the field suggest that the battery pricing will drop dramatically as technology improves, but we haven't yet seen drastic changes in the cost of battery replacement systems for these cars. Not only that, Lexus cars have known in the past certain models with transmission failures, which can cost three, four, five thousand dollars to replace, as well as numerous other issues. Digital displays on certain models, for example, certain SC models, have seen issues along the way too. So there's technology that can hamper both of these brands. So at the end of the day, drive what you like. So the next one on the list is actually due to maintenance and servicing and the specialization that's associated with that. Mercedes-Benz cars can obviously be very, very complex, especially as you buy the models that are higher up the rev range. And of course, with that comes a more specialized requirement for technicians and their training, specialized test equipment, specialized tools. 
that all gets very expensive. So your garden variety mechanic can't often service a lot of these vehicles. So either you have to rely heavily on the dealership network, which means you're gonna pay large sums of money and fortunes and ransoms out of your own personal paychecks to repair these cars, or you can possibly find an independent shop that might be able to help you out that specialize in particular cars like that. But what can also help you is great resources like eBay, Amazon, forums online, gives you lots of go-tos, the typical failure rates. You can even diagnose a lot of these problems yourself and just read up online and forums and communities can help guide you through a lot of these problems. If you're a little bit handy, you can replace and repair 50, 60, 70% of the failures that you might see with these cars. And when we talk about Lexus, well, they're not exactly flawless either. You know, with hybrid systems and electric systems, they utilize a higher voltage and it becomes a very unsafe condition for the untrained personnel. So let's not forget, it's not for the do-it-yourselfer as well if you have a hybrid system with batteries. So again, we talk about drive what you like. So the next issue with buying a used Mercedes-Benz out of warranty has to do with the out of warranty costs and service and maintenance. It's funny enough, so it's actually quite hilarious when you're approaching the end of your warranty period with your Mercedes-Benz and you drive into the dealer because it has some weird shifting issues. Take it to the dealer, the service advisor says, oh no, that's actually quite normal. Or then you also notice a slight little weepage of something or it's consuming antifreeze. All of a sudden, you're having to add a little bit of coolant in between or you're having to add a little bit of extra engine oil in between oil changes. You go to the service advisor and they tell you that's quite normal. It's hilarious because two months after the warranty expires, you hear the horror stories where all of a sudden that transmission is in fact identified to have a significant problem. It's going to cost you $9,000 to repair. Or that coolant leak all of a sudden out of warranty becomes, oh, your water pump is fried, so you're going to have to replace that too. Oh, you're using extra oil. Whoa, your valve guide seals are leaking because you have a hot V and a twin turbo setup between the Vs have caused the heads to cook and now you have engine problems. It's funny how that works as soon as you're out of warranty. So those costs can be significant to the used buyer. I mean, a digital display can cost you five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Set of turbos, $5,000. Used transmission, ten grand. A rebuilt engine, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Even just to repair some of your air ride suspension might cost you anywhere from two to five, six thousand dollars $6,000 just to rectify some of the potential issues with that system. So those are all very valid reasons why you may not want to buy a used Mercedes out of warranty. But again, that goes for any make, including Lexus. And if there's one piece of consolation I can advise you on, you look at it this way. A client goes in and buys a brand new Mercedes, pays $100,000 for the car. Five years later, he sells it for $50,000. What's the differential? 50 grand, right? That's the way I see it. So if you buy that car five years later, you've saved $50,000. So buying it used, even if you had to do a set of turbos for 10 grand, and maybe you needed a set of tires and brakes. Now you're into it for $15,000. Well, it's still far cry from that 50 grand. You have a huge differential to make up. So now that isn't quite the same problem that it appears to be now, is it? The next reason why you don't want to buy used Mercedes happens to be because of the complex systems and the over-engineering of the brand. So a lot of people would use that terminology relatively loosely, but the reality is, Mercedes-Benz, along with many of the other German brands, can be very expensive and can be considered over-engineered in a lot of ways. However, that's how you push the boundaries of technology, efficiency, performance, luxury. All of those factors come into play. If you want something a little bit better, a little nicer, a little stronger and faster, you're going to have to seek these brands. But it's this very technology and complexity that can cause you grief in the end. Of course, add turbos to any system to make it more powerful. That's a potential for failure. Of course, add more electronics, more failures. You're gonna have more modules, you're gonna have more displays, you're gonna have more buttons and keys and automation incorporated into the car, which is more of a potential for failure. Just think of all the safety nannies, all the sensors you have, even just in the windshields and the bumpers to make sure that you don't run into somebody or that you can tell when somebody's driving behind you or it keeps you between the lanes. All of that technology, which by the way, I might add, is spilling over into the mainstream, so it's not just unique for Mercedes, but those are the very things that can cost you money in the long run. But let's not forget, 
every brand, including Lexus, is slowly adopting much of this technology. Now, another reason why, and many people would say that Mercedes-Benz is a bad buy as a used car, is because of parts availability. And I would squash that in a lot of ways. Why? Because if you were to look back 10, 15 years ago, absolutely 100%. That is a concern. Nowadays with jobbers, nowadays with sources like FCP Euro, you've got Amazon, eBay, parts are available just about everywhere. If you are a do-it-yourselfer and you're a little bit thrifty, the forums can also guide you in many directions to get parts that you can buy at fractions of the cost from buying from the dealer. Sure, you can't get it at Canadian Tire or Pep Boys or any of those other relatively jobber vendors. There are still many, many sources. If you have a little bit of patience and you have a little bit of ingenuity, you can get those parts delivered to your doorstep within hours or days. And the next reason why you shouldn't buy Mercedes-Benz out of warranty is because very similar to the last one. But in this case, it's the brand specific parts. I already spoke of the availability, which we know you can get the availability relatively easily nowadays, but the brand specific is something that we've battled with for years buying used import cars. Doesn't matter whether you're buying a Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, there's always brand specific. And while companies like Lexus and Toyota often share many parts from the same parts bin, so does Audi and Volkswagen or Lamborghini and Volkswagen. But Mercedes-Benz is slightly more limited in the fact that the parts, the brand specific parts are generally the way to go. You're stuck more or less buying OEM. So it's not so much that you have all kinds of jobber opportunities, but you can certainly get a lot of factory parts at a reduced price and a relatively ease of availability. So the next reason why you wouldn't want to buy a used Mercedes, according to Lexus owners, is the fact that there are cheaper alternatives. Yeah, sure, you can get cheaper alternatives to a Mercedes-Benz and still say you're driving a luxury car. For example, you can buy cars from Acura, Infiniti, Lexus. All our other options and alternatives to buying a Mercedes or a BMW or Audi or Porsche or any of those. But the real question is, do you want one of those other cars? After all, Mercedes-Benz are through and through luxury car. BMW is on its own. Porsche is more or less focused. But what is a Lexus? It's essentially a Toyota rebadged and overpriced. How about Acura? It's a Honda. And Infiniti is more or less a Nissan. So if you want the real McCoy, there is something to be said for buying a Mercedes. But there are in fact cheaper, cheaper options if you don't mind driving in a refrigerator or a dishwasher. So another reason why you probably may not want to drive a used Mercedes is that there are more reliable alternatives. And while Mercedes-Benz is synonymous with refinement, technology, performance, and luxury, there is an associated unreliability factor that's somehow incorporated into the brand. Now, it appears the simpler the car, the less reliability concerns you have. As you move up the chain and you wind up in the CLS or the S-Class cars, often there are a little bit more potential for failure. There's far more technology incorporated in those cars. There's more power, more heat, more failure, and just likeliness that you'll spend a little more time in the shop and more money out of your pocket. So if you want the most out of reliability, then you either look at one of the lower end Mercedes-Benz or you can go with the obvious choices, the Lexus, which owns the current crown for reliability, Acura, which has a few missteps, but generally are a fairly reliable brand. And even if you want a German car, Porsche, which has certainly its share of unreliable vehicles, but they have many, many reliable and dependable cars as well. So you just have to do a little research there. So there are a few options out there. If you want a reliable luxury car, premium Mercedes cars may not necessarily hit that mark. So the last reason why you may not want to buy a used Mercedes-Benz goes down to resale value. Yes, we already touched briefly on depreciation, but what does that actually look like and, and how can you actually mitigate that depreciation? You have to be very selective with the specific cars that you buy. Now, just because you poured 10 grand into servicing in the last two years, just because you've got new tires and a new windshield in the car, just because you bought that specific model does not necessarily garner you more profits when you sell the cars. As a matter of fact, this goes back to what I spoke of already. The higher up the food chain generally means the more, the larger hit you're going to take. So if you want to maximize your resale value, consider certain things. Again, either avoid the brand altogether, or if you really do want to buy a Mercedes, the AMG cars are specifically the best for resale value or the G-Class, the G-Wagon specifically, or even the lower end cars, for example, like the CLA or the C-Class cars, 
they do face a significant depreciation as every luxury car does. However, the rate of depreciation is slightly lower. And again, you will maintain a slightly higher resale value. If you are most concerned with that, then you go with a brand like Lexus. Maybe go with an option like a standard ES or an IS model. Those cars will hold their value a little better. But if you just want to really go down to basics, Honda Civics, Toyota Corollas, Camrys, but again, as I say, life's way too short to drive boring cars. So let's just talk about the Benz. Thanks a lot, everybody. I know you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and a notifications bell as well. Click that link over there. You'll really like that. That is a video I did recently, very popular, of course, about why Mercedes-Benz depreciate so badly. Hope to see you guys on the next one. Catch you real soon. Bye-bye. Perfect.